engine, fluent Masai, fluent Deus, you tell us. Asante sana. Asante sana. Your Excellency, the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Dr. Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, the chairman of KANU, Weshimua Gideon Moy, distinguished leadership, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Two things I should say first. When he mentioned that uh, I did not indicate whether I was Rudisha, Rudisha is my nephew. <laughs> And I'm the one who hosted the party when you gave him, when you gave him the boot. The last time I was here, ladies and gentlemen, was a month ago to receive my certificate of nomination for the seat of senator. And so even before I say what I'm going to say, this is already promising to be a weird election season. <laughs> Because when the party leader made the phone call to me to ask me to come to his home, I was in Narok campaigning for myself and on his instructions campaigning for Raila Odinga. This is a weird election season. It is also a Davidian moment. A Davidian moment in the sense that as in the days of Jesse, a young, not so young in my case, herds boy, looking after his cows and sheep, gets called and summoned, and as every herds boy knows, obedience is the first attribute of being a good. And so I come, not knowing the message, and now I'm here, standing So, as a student of William Shakespeare, like His Excellency has said, to his house and he said, you know what, you are going to be my running mate. I thought we are going to be jogging together. <laughs> because, because because I normally have running mates in the morning when I do my five o'clock job. <laughs> so I was happy that I was going to be running with my party leader. But as it became clear to me what running mate meant in this context, what came through my mind was Anthony and Cleopatra. To be or not to be. And so Your Excellency, I have come here today to answer that immortal question that was posed by Shakespeare in Antony and Cleopatra. And my answer yes is, yes it is to be. <laughs> and with all humility, therefore, I accept the nomination to be the running mate of the presidential candidate of the Wiper Democratic Movement. You know, there were so many ways we could have arrived here, Your Excellency. One, you could have called me to the Serena for an interview. <laughs> I would probably have hesitated and then one Wednesday morning, agreed to come. <laughs> but you chose the method that Jesus used when he appointed his 12 disciples. He just said, he just said, come, follow me. I dropped everything. In my case, I was not fishing because I don't fish. But I left my livestock unattended to. I left my constituency for the Senate seat unattended to. 
I have not made any formal announcement to my campaign team that I am here, but I am here and I have heeded the call. But, but look at what people did who didn't have to go to Serena for an interview. Look at what the 12 disciples did. They not only established Christendom, they changed the world forever. Amen. So it is possible to change the world without an interview. Your Excellency, the last time Amasai stood to accept the deputy national leadership of the country was 1966 when Joseph Morombi was called upon by Jomo Kenyatta. And Joseph Morombi, by the way, came from Kilgoris like I do. So 56 years later, another call comes. <laughs> That's, that, that's, how long, that's how long it takes for a minority to hear a call. <laughs> and so I am privileged that, because I ask myself, what the heck, what is it that Dr. Kalonzo Musioka, who happens to be a friend of mine, actually, off the record, my wife is a friend of Mama Pauline, having worked together at the Central Bank. So these are people I know. But then, I've had cups of tea with him, but totally different cups of tea to the cup of tea I had two days ago. <laughs> And so I'm humbled on my own behalf and on behalf of my family and my community that this call has come at all. Your Excellency, this country is getting used to majoritarian tyranny. And it is an uncomfortable thing to get used to. Because if all that we are ever going to chase are quantities in numbers, when shall quality ever find its place? It's in history. History has shown that herdsmen and shepherds have the longest endurance. They have provided leadership in the most difficult of times. But because of the method of national, I mean of Western democracy, where numbers are tallied on paper, and only people with numbers shall see the light of day, it is the most courageous thing you have ever done in your life to appoint a pastoralist with not the kind of numbers that people talk about to be your deputy. But I shall concur with the English people when they say, fortune favors the brave. And that bravery shall pay back upon you. Your Excellency, your manifesto shall be my manifesto. And your party shall be my party. And because this is not the day to delve into my heart, let alone my mind. Because I do these things all the time when I write books. Let me say, without equivocation, that on behalf, for the sake of my people of Narok, on behalf of the Maasai people wherever they are in Kenya and East Africa, on behalf of all pastoralists, on behalf of all marginalized communities seeking inclusivity in a majoritarian environment, I accept this nomination on their behalf.
And if Waipa had never wiped anything else in its life. <laughs> it's going to wipe the pastoralists. Oh, no. Take it from me. So, Your Excellency, the journey has begun. And the journey of a thousand miles starts but with one step. And so it starts here, it starts today. And I concur with you that we did not come here to bury Caesar. We are saying that we are a party of inclusivity, we are a party of unity, we are a party of Kazi Bila Wizi. And we, having brought me to the national table, the table of national conversation, this is irreversible, you know. <laughs> City, the pastoralists have found their way to the table of national conversation via wiper. But having said that, as one of your key advisors in this journey that is definitely going to be tortuous, probably treacherous, I will at all times advocate that the nation must always dialogue with itself. And at no point should acrimony and the quest for office be to the detriment of the peace of this country. And it's not because we don't know how to draw swords. It's because we draw swords to our enemies, not to our own people. And every Kenyan is our people. So Your Excellency, we shall speak another day. Today I came to accept this nomination <laughs> and to say thank you very much and thank you, Waipa, for receiving me in this house. And I promise to be an asset to this party. Asante. Makofi sana. Nikisema enda soba bogin, onasema soba enda.